this and thanks for taking the time to speak with us it's an absolute pleasure oh thank you so much for having me the biggest thing right now i guess is this european tour it's what you're on at this exact moment mm -hmm. um of oh, halfway through now as well with the last day of the uk parties tonight mm -hmm. um how has it been so far uh it's been overwhelming uh it's definitely exceeded our expectations we we came into the tour with cautious optimism mm -hmm. you know we knew that we we're a very new band yeah we knew that we had never been to Europe. Yeah. Um, and what the album was out for maybe, oh God, what well the album was out for three days yeah. by the time. Yeah. <laughs> so we effectively went into a full blown European tour with four songs. Out, yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, and it was like the first show was Krakow, Poland. Um, getting on stage with the whole like how is this gonna go are we gonna be received well and there's just one like scary Neanderthal like motherfucker in the back that's just like vitriol vitriol so I was like alright okay we're That'll gonna be okay. you got one That'll person do, at least. least and then then the responses have been been great and then by the time we got to Italy because mm. our last label Everlasting Spew that did the EP was an Italian label oh okay so that was when we first started getting some pits and some sing-alongs and like and then it's just the UK, I'm happy to say they have been by far the strongest shows. Well, that's what I was about to ask next, because you've already done Manchester and Glasgow, mm -hmm. two obviously huge cities in this country. Yes. And how were those shows? And you're suggesting they were brilliant. Brilliant. Yeah. I mean, yeah, absolutely. Manchester was, I mean, that was my favorite show of the tour. Yeah. Mainly because of one fan. Uh, there was one, one, one gal, her name's Claire, I met her after the show. I saw, saw your post. video, yeah. Dude, there was that the whole set. It wasn't oh, just wow. that song. I mean, she was just like, it was, I mean, for me, not to go off on a, a, a tangent, but, it, uh, you know, I, I, I think part of, part of what I, people are responding to that I appreciate the most is um, the emotional content mm -hmm. in the music that I try to, that's the guiding principle of the music. So when I see someone connecting in that way, lyrically, and you know, just really, that was when I really felt like, that was the first time I felt like we got off stage and I'm like, okay, we're, we're like a real band now. Okay, something's you know happening, I mean? yeah. Exactly, it was a really validating moment where I'm like, there are people out there that don't just hear like the riffs and the blast beats, no get me wrong, it's mm. just great. I mean, I love that, That's uh, I, the fans that, that just like the, the, the dazzling musicality, we, I appreciate that as well, but there is something about the people that understand not just what it is, but why it is. Okay, yeah. And that's when, at, in, in, in Manchester, that was the first time I was exposed to fans that felt that way, and that was really cool. And then Glasgow was uh, the first really violent show of the tour, which I liked. Of course. Really <laughs> Glasgow. And uh, that's the one, that, especially in Europe, um, the fans are a bit more refined mm -hmm. and and not in a bad way but you know they're they're typically more engaged mm -hmm. i was kind of a little thrown off the first couple of dates because you have a lot of a lot of these guys okay yeah and in america this means something very different right in america this means you're disengaged you're bored oh yeah if you're not pushing people around or swinging your head around that like and in Europe, it's different. The, the 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 culture of like how to receive this kind of music is different. And then I grew to appreciate it more because I, especially communicating with fans, I just noticed a general, generally higher level of substantive engagement with the music that we're playing. Mm. And they're watching because they're watching. They're not watching because they're bored. They're yeah. watching because they're 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 focused. You would know if you're in. Glasgow, Manchester, London, you'll know if people are bored. They just won't be there. Yeah. They're going out for a smoke. They're yeah, going out yeah, for a yeah. drink. That's what that's I've heard. The thing, yeah. That's what I've, I've heard that, like, that European fans uh, in general are not very patient with the stuff they don't up. like. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they just walk out or whatever. Yeah. So it's good. And it, it's, it's been a good sign that every show, from the first song to the second song, the crowd is four times the size. You mm. know what I mean? So. Well, yeah, that was the next thing, really. Um, have you been surprised, pleasantly surprised, by either the crowd that's gathered for you, because yeah. ultimately you're part of a four, uh, four band bill, yeah. um, second on, and that brings its own pressures, of course, yes. because ultimately people want my dad to see Nile, for example, and so yeah. on. But like, okay, we'll check the support out. But again, another thing, not so well that we're maybe slightly famous for in this country is not always coming down early for the, the support bands. Yes. So have you been happy with that? I've been extremely happy mm. with that. I mean, that was a concern. We were fortunate to have the third slot of four. Um, so we're not the first, first, first. But it's been, I think the strength of the package is really working in our favor, yeah. admittedly. I mean, the people that are talking to and speaking about the bands on this package are like, 
man, this is really like a almost like a mini fest. You yeah. know what I mean? Like the, it's just with with Nile and Hate Eternal being such monolithic figures in yeah. our, in our scene, and fortunate enough to have a strong strong excitement surrounding our debut. It's just putting those together, putting like the revered classic can't miss bands together with this thing people are excited to see for the first time. Mm -hmm. It's hard, it's hard to not show up early for that Yeah, and it just seems like a perfect way to do it. As you say, revered, old school, classic, everyone loves, but yeah. here's also the new. And exactly. Not the replacement, but the future. Of course not, exactly. Yeah. So, have you had any time to get out of it? You've been city to city to city in this country. I'll take it it's been, finish your set, come to the next one, so mm -hmm. on. Any time to check out England? Uh, not so much England yet, sadly, mm -hmm. and that has a lot to do with, I actually have a lot of good friends, uh, uh, guy, the guy who builds my guitar, uh, Dylan Humphreys of Demon S Guitars, okay. he's, uh, he's, uh, he's located in Bristol, um, so he's been out to the shows, and we, I mean, he's been, uh, I Skype him three, four times a week for the last four years, and yeah. the first time I got to meet him oh, was, in, was in Manchester, so I've been kind of... Uh, we've been just kind of hanging out. Oh, okay. I'm trying to get out more. Uh, tonight, I have a buddy, another great, amazing guitar player. His name is Joss Allen. Um, he's coming out tonight. We've just kind of been internet guitar player friends. So oh, okay, I think yeah. we're going to go try to get into some stuff tonight okay. after the set. Maybe <laughs> yeah, a bit fun, fun, yeah. Um, so you've, you've already started influences in the past. No, sorry, excuse me. On your tour with two bands, you've previously started as influences, Hey Eternal and Nile. That has got to be one of the most special things for you at this stage of your career, right? It will be most. I mean, this was a tour I've said unironically a number of times. I'm like, if I got sidelined by a bus tomorrow, mm. it wouldn't be a tragedy. It would be going out on top. I mean, it would be. It would be, sure, in a sense. But it would be like, no one could say that like, I didn't, it didn't get to where I needed to go. So it was like being able to tour with my heroes and... And beyond that, the validation I've received from them personally on this tour. Like, yeah. they've become very big fans of the band, very big fans of what I'm doing. And it's, uh, I, told, I told the guys in my band, I'm like, you thought I was confident a year ago. Like, Eric Rutan just gave me a thumbs up. Like, <laughs> I'm immune from critique now. Like, <laughs> I, I, heard, I heard the approval from the only motherfucker I need, you know what I mean? Yeah. So that's been hugely validating. Um, it, it's tough because it's like, getting this tour, especially for a first tour, I'm like, where do we even go from here? You know what I mean? That's the other thing. It's mm. like, man, we're touring. A, like, this would be a tour that if someone told me I'd get in 10 years. Okay, yeah, yeah. Like, as almost a career topping, kind of like going out with these guys. Right. So the fact that this was an introductory tour is like, what the fuck, you know? It, momentum, that ties into momentum. It, it's yeah. so high now with you guys. The album has been really well received. Yeah. Did you have any kind of inkling at the time? that you'd create something pretty special with it though, that you kind of went, okay, this is pretty strong. Based, coming off the EP, the production from how you wrote it and so on, you thought, yeah, this could, could make its mark. Yeah, well, hmm. I've always had an, it, kind of an internal relationship with the quality of my music because mm -hmm. um, for working on Vitriol's music for so long, especially not in the eyes of the public, right? Okay, yeah. not like releasing music. It was something that I always really realized that I thought it was deeply special but I, I, was, I, I, I had my doubts that anyone else would. Okay, yeah, so it was yeah. one of those things where it's like, it's not that I wasn't confident in the quality, I just thought no one would really care. Right. Because the, the nature of the extreme metal scene right now isn't very, doesn't look very kindly on, um, it's very, the, the, the technical approach to metal is a very divisive thing, yeah. right? You know, you have the guys that are like the anti-tech death guys, and then you have the, the you know, the, 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 the uh, guys that are just all about, if you're into tech death, it's very pristine, it's very this, there's a very formulaic approach to it. Yeah. And we just said like, well, we're just gonna say fuck you to both of you guys. <laughs> it's like, we're gonna play technically and not care, and we're not gonna focus on being, you know, my approach to using, implementing technicality is to overwhelm the listener, not to dazzle the listener. Mm. That's the primary philosophical difference between Vitriol and a lot of other bands that have an athletic approach to their instruments. It's like listening to Early Nile, listening to Hated Church, even listening to those first couple Origin albums, stuff like that. It's like you hear, you hear musicianship used to create atmosphere, mm. not just to be like, oh, look at the scale I learned yesterday. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So because of that, because we didn't cater, we didn't pander to either kind of niche, um, I, I, I thought there would be no home for us. But it turns out that because of that, 
people seem to be responding well to it because it's not checking the boxes of any given thing. Well, yeah, it's funny you say that because you basically answered another one. I was talking about fragmentation of metal genres. You mentioned it, and one that um, one, one of yours that seems to be pretty true and consistent um, is death metal. It's pretty true and consistent on that straight path. If you're just playing extreme metal, you're playing extreme metal. Otherwise, you're a tech death metal or you're this and that way. Precisely, yeah. um, you guys seem to preach the virtues but of the past without actually clearly living in it, and that's a tricky balance. But you've obviously done it. Thank you. And you said yourself, the response is happening. Yeah, I mean, it's 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 really about. I say my biggest strength as a musician is that I'm a I'm just a fan of mm. extreme metal and a student of extreme metal, and I think a lot of people don't value education when it comes to this kind of stuff. It's like no, like it's some people might shrug it off as like an elitist gatekeeping remark, but like right. learn your fucking roots, man. Yeah, like not for our sake. Not for my sake, so we can have some metal archives, blow hard <laughs> conversation about what obscure shit you know. But know your roots because just like if you were, you were to study anything, right? You yeah. go to college for anything, what are you gonna do? You, were you gonna teach history and stop at the Civil War? Yeah. You know what I mean? So we have a lot of people making music in that way, where it's like, for me, my strength is like, I, learned, I fell in love with death metal, I explored every aspect of death metal, and that allowed me to unearth not just what death metal is, but why it is. Yeah. Why did it? Why? Why do our drums go? Why did like? Why did people start doing that? Why did Pete Sandoval start blasting like that? What is we trying to say with that? What, yeah. what is the what is the vocabulary of, of extreme metal? Right. Yeah, and like, yeah. Like and and uh, the order in which you should arrange those words. It is. And uh, then it's really not that hard. It just kind of happens organically because you you start once you start hearing what's right, you can hear what's wrong in contrast, and then you start pruning away things that you feel like don't lend itself to the real fire and the message and the, 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 the emotional content that, that death metal can offer people. Yeah, you, you've said as before as well, it's not just about, let's see how heavy you can go, it's mm -hmm. also about creating an emotional connection. Yes. And you, that's... Well, it's all about that. Yeah. You know, the heaviness is just a vessel to communicate the heaviness of the, the emotional content. Yeah. Because right? that's what it's... it's, it, it's it's just like if someone was, I mean, music's no different than someone trying to paint a picture of a fruit bowl. You're trying to represent what you're seeing oh, yeah, in that yeah. bowl of fruit on paint. And that's what you do with music. You're trying to articulate some existential truth about your life through music because it's a more concise way of communicating it to people. It's a fascinating um, way to put it because you say the bowl of fruit in a wall, one person looks at that and sees a bowl of fruit, mm -hmm. another person looks at that and sees exactly what the person was trying to get across with it. So I think it's a fantastic yeah. way you put it. You've already talked about it as well, the how, how much, how fast this is all coming your way. Um, you can, I wouldn't say you seem overawed by it, but do you have you, you have you had that moment where you um, are getting a chance to fully soak it in yet? Or is that something that's gonna come after this tour, do you think? Gonna take a moment to sit back and just reflect? Yeah, it's, we try to take the moments to, to stop and smell the roses, especially mm. like after the, the sets, it's been like, for me, uh, the, the interaction with the fans have been, I mean, we're just so humbled by it. Uh, just the, the, the words we've been getting from people. And we get back to the van and I'm with the bus and I'm just like, man, dude. I even had a fan in, in, in Manchester be mm -hmm. like, man, you really give everyone the time of day. And I'm like, ah, you know, I don't want to be unappreciative. And he's like, man, in six months, what are you going to do? You're going to be out there for seven hours. Yeah. And I was like, fuck, man. Like, <laughs> so Adam and I were talking about that too. And I had to stop and be like, man, what are we going to do when too many people want to talk to us? And I had to stop. We were walking down the street. In, in Scotland, and I stopped. I'm like, how cool is it that we're having to have this conversation? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, like we have to appreciate that. That's a pretty wonderful problem to have. That mm -hmm. you know, people are excited about music so much that you don't have enough time in the day to, to talk to them about it. So, but you also know it's all about striking when the iron's hot. You yeah. know, with the internet age, that if you go quiet for six months, you've got suicide. Yes, basically. But you also out on tour and just, uh, yeah, with an host by Scotland. Decapitation. Um, that's what was going to wrap up 2019 for you, isn't it? Yep. Yeah, and that's throughout uh, America, isn't it? Yep. Yeah, US tour. Yes, sir. So, what about 2020 then? What's the what's well, the overarching plan? I guess we are kicking it off by coming back over here with Christian and Grusin. We're doing a full European tour, 34 shows in 34 days. 34 shows in a day. day Those Brazilian OGs are going to just <laughs> beat the fucking shit out of us on that tour. Man. 
it's going to be brutal, man. I mean, I, I'm really excited because I'm a big Christian fan. Mm. So that's just for me personally. And Exhumed with Matt Harvey. You know, he's a bit gruesome and everything. So that was a big band for me growing up. So for me, like, I'm trying to view this stuff as as much of a career opportunity as just like a, what an amazing thing for a metal fan to be able to like interact with these guys on a daily basis and pick their brains. Yeah, and, and you, you know really will mean? be as well when you yeah. down 34 days, 34 yes. days, but, I can't believe that. <laughs> yes, but we're, we're just trying to, I mean, it's one of those things, striking while iron is hot, taking the opportunities as they come, yeah. and the opportunities come so quickly mm. that it's like it's hard to really you know, in terms of like, oh, there's this run with this band. What do you think? And it's like, blah, 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 and two weeks. Oh, they this band went. So it's you just kind of making a band work is almost like you're juggling and people are just throwing new balls at you. Yeah, and you have to grab the ball and try to keep that. You know what I mean? So it's you can only plan it out so much outside of tours. And what we do in between is just try to fit in as much supplemental stuff like playthrough videos or music videos of or course. new merchandise like we design and print all of our own merchandise it's just we're always toiling away on something this is what we enjoy doing the most obviously playing music yeah. and stuff but it's all a means to an end and it's all ultimately elevating in service of elevating the music and the so it's after that European tour, we don't have anything booked yet, but I imagine six weeks after that, we're gonna be back out yeah. somewhere with someone. I don't, so. and it seems very much like that's gonna yeah. be the case. <laughs> yeah. Finally, aside from who you're playing with, obviously Nile and Hey Eternal, um, who would be part of your dream extreme metal lineup that you'll be part of? You could either be headlining and they're below you, or you can be supporting them. A couple of bands. If I had to put together, let's do, mm -hmm. I would say my, if, if 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 someone came to me and they said you can you can handpick all of your bands, yeah, I would do. I'm gonna leave Nile and Hate Eternal out of it yeah. because I would do Immolation mm -hmm. headlining, us direct support, yeah, and uh, a band actually from the UK here. My one, of, I think my favorite modern death metal band, Lucifer. Oh yeah, amazing band. Um, incredible band. I had Minthor, their drummer, was kind enough to show up tonight. That's how I got my shirt. Oh! <laughs> so I'm, that dude is my favorite drummer in metal, period. I mean, he he's on he's on three of my top five albums of the year. <laughs> Who does Who, a, a, who's on three albums a year? And yeah. B, who's on three of the best, best. albums a year? So he's on, on the New Enthroned record, uh, Cold Black Suns, or Black Cold Black Suns? Pretty sure it's Cold Black Cold Suns, one of those. Uh, he's on uh, the new Erados album, Gods Without Name, and he's on um, he's on the Lucifer EP, Sacrament, that came out this year. So the dude's just not unstoppable. Yeah. He records all of his own stuff at home. It's insane. I it's it's great. But that would be that would be my ultimate tour, I think, because that would be. The kind of Lucifer and Immolation share an atmospheric lean, as as I like to, mm. and I think that would be such a great example of kind of like this tour of the classic validated band kind of paying validation to this younger band yeah. that's coming out. So yeah, that'd be my answer. Those three Good ones. Yeah, brilliant. <laughs>